I got to check this out. Like, what is there to really break down, man? I mean, you'll find it. <laughs> you'll find it. If there's one person who could break something down, you. You, you will. Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown for the first trailer for Jokey Folia 2. Folia 2 means a delusion or mental breakdown for the first trailer for Jokey Folia 2. Did you say Jokey? Did you say Jokey? Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown for the first trailer for Jokey Folia 2. Folia 2 <laughs> means a delusion or mental illness shared by two people in close association. I did not know that. Did you hear about Rihanna's new Smurf movie where she's voicing Smurf? Just check on Discussing Film Twitter page. Uh, no, I did not know that. But if you're translating that, do it in the horrible French accent I used to say the phrase. This CinemaCon trailer gives us our real first look at Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn in this standalone universe take on the Joker character. Of course, a sequel from the award Lady Gaga film from director Todd Phillips. This looks like it's going to be a pretty controversial film from the mere fact that it is a kind of musical. But you know what? Musicals are great, folks. We wouldn't have the cinema industry without the popularity of movie musicals in the 50s and 60s. And I'm kind of sad to see that they've gone out of style. But Joker 2 is bringing it back. All right, let's break down what we see in this trailer. It opens with a prison guard opening Arthur Fleck's cell and asking, hey, Fleck, you got I'm hoping it's not like too, too, like, you know, musical, like, you know. Um, like, I'm fine with, like, a few songs. Like, maybe, you know, maybe, like, two or, like, three, you know. But the whole thing is, um, I don't know. I don't want it to feel like I'm watching a play. But I feel like that's kind of what they're going for. Which would make sense. I mean, it's two crazy motherfuckers, like, in La La Land, bro. Joke for us today. Notice his cell number. Looks like it's E230, and he has his own private cell. Just a quick recap of the 2019 film. Arthur Fleck was a mentally unstable clown, an aspiring stand-up comedian who lives with his mother in 1981 Gotham City. And because of, you know, federal due regulation of the safety net. There's like 20 to 30 songs. Where did you get this information from? What? He loses his healthcare coverage. He has a specific condition where he is unable to stop his laughing fits. He idolizes the late night comedian Murray Franklin, played by Robert De Niro, which was Todd Phillips referencing the Martin Scorsese movie, The King of Comedy, as well as the Martin Scorsese movie, Taxi Driver. Arthur is attacked by three drunk investment bankers and he violently lashes out in defense and he shoots them. But one of the guys, he just straight up kills out of rage. Thomas Wayne, father to Bruce Wayne, is running for mayor and he condemns these attacks, but it ends up stirring this controversial movement in favor of someone fighting back against the rich and clown masks start appearing all over the city and trolling Thomas at his events. Arthur ends up believing from a letter from his mother, Penny, that Thomas Wayne could be his biological father, and he ends up creeping on young Bruce Wayne on the family estate, and Alfred Pennyworth gets in his face. Arthur ends up confronting Thomas at a theater, and Thomas denies it, but Arthur submits a tape to Murray Franklin, who airs it on a show in order to mock him, calling him a joker, and Arthur learns from Arkham Records that Penny was actually Thomas's housekeeper and was mentally unstable herself and had a violent boyfriend who abused Arthur, sticking his face against a radiator. Arthur ends up smothering his mother we learned that arthur's relationship with sophie zazie beats throughout the movie was all a figment of his imagination arthur ends up getting invited to murray's mm -hmm. show so that murray can kind of apologize to him but arthur ends up spiraling he murders his former co-worker who used to make fun of him yo dante what you doing for ken's b-day i'm throwing something light on the grill yo uh kia Ka kaya uh, thank, thank you for the sub. I, like, <laughs> throwing some light on the grill, bro. Like, I know we're not talking about Ken Carson, right? Like, you, like, what, what are you talking about, man? Him and Randall, but spares his buddy no, Gary. Got to be mentally prepared for a three-hour movie with singing every twenty minutes. Three hours. He flees the detectives after dancing down some steps to a Gary Glitter classic track. So I mean, I would assume that the, the music would be fire, though. Like, it, it's got to be, like, some fire-ass music, I think. Got to be. Joker Fever has taken over the city. He goes on Murray's show and demands to be introduced as the Joker. And he admits on TV to killing the men and defends his actions to Murray. And then he shoots Murray in front of the cameras. He ends up fleeing into the city and then standing above his praising supporters. And it's implied that one of these rioters are the ones who killed the Waynes, leaving Bruce alone in the alley. But the film ends with Arthur suddenly in a mental ward laughing about a joke that he refuses to tell the doctor about. And he walks away with bloody footprints. You wouldn't and get it. Orderlies. Director Todd Phillips said that he intentionally left it ambiguous as to whether Arthur 
becomes the Joker of the traditional Batman stories, or it inspires a separate character. The Joaquin Phoenix believes that Arthur is actually the Joker from a Batman universe. Many also debated whether all these events might have taken place inside of Arthur's mind, like the movie Fight Club. And when we talked about this movie five years ago, we pointed at clues like, you know, time on clocks in the final scene matching another major scene where Arthur was just randomly shown banging his head against the wall in one of the few other scenes where things were this bright and this white. So the music in this trailer is what the mm. world needs now, which was originally composed by Burt Bacharach and popularized by Jackie DeShannon back in 1965. Now, this version of what the world needs now is love, sweet love, is the voice of Tom Jones and Sammy Davis Jr. And that's why it kind of sounds like this guy's about to break into bomb, bomb. What's new, pussycat? We see guards escorting a rain-soaked Arthur down the cell block. Presumably, this is after that shot of him maniacally laughing in the rain in the exercise yard. He passes and locks eyes with- They got him tied up? I didn't even see that. They got this nigga tied up? was originally composed by Burt Bacharach and or popularized just... by Jackie DeShannon back in 1965. Now, this version of what the world sounds like, this guy in a rain-soaked Arthur down the cell block. Presumably, this is after that shot of him in night. Hi, don't I been watching for years now. It's my 23rd UK time. I also know you liked the star. Wars Kotos Cinematics. Can I suggest the SO Cinematics? They are amazing to watch. S Love the stream smile. So, yo, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, Loke, 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 Loke. Thank you for the. Is that? I know that's not. I, I probably somebody else. Yo, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Frankly, laughing. He's the, the Joker, but it's like he going clown the bar by our fence. Then again, he'd be banging himself. Like he, you know, he, you know in the exercise yard. He passes and locks eyes with Harley Quinn, Lady Gaga, singing in a music class. We must ask ourselves, is she real? Because this Joker just has a very delicate relationship with reality. Who knows? Everything we see her in in this movie might just be something that's inside of his mind. I choose to believe that she is real, or at least as real as anything is in this movie. But I ask, what did Harley do to get into this facility? Because originally Harley Quinn's backstory is as an employee at Arkham Hospital, mm -hmm. Dr. Harley and Quinzel, who falls in love with the Joker and allows him to kind of drive her crazy and love it or hate it there's always been you know something a bit problematic about this relationship which the margot robbie take on the character actually embraced and addressed in birds of prey in a way that i really really liked but again i don't think lady gaga's version of harley quinn is meant to replace what margot robbie birds of prey was fire bro doing its own very very weird thing we hear like a voiceover it. saying we use music to make us whole to balance the fractures in ourselves but todd phillips at cinemacon on tuesday evening said that he didn't want to call this movie a musical what he said was quote i like to say it's a movie where music is an essential element to okay that doesn't veer too far from the first film okay one of the first ways i describe the character Bet. is that he has music in him he has a lot of grace to him it's different but it will make sense when you see it Bet. so make of that what you will in Bet. this shot arthur gazes up and the umbrellas now suddenly change color. i like this blue yellow this orange, has got to be in red, his head which seem like the colors of murray franklin's set seems like arthur is just now imagining himself in like singing mm. in the rain by the way singing in the rain all-time best movie musical starring debbie reynolds who was carrie fisher's mother and in my deep dive of the alien i made the case that ripley singing you are my lucky star in the final scene to calm herself as she attacked the xenomorph was kind of a meta reverence by sigourney weaver who had auditioned for princess leia lost the part to carrie fisher but still had respect for these women blazing a trail for her to be able to yo uh uh chills world with the five get the subs i appreciate you bro i did not know she auditioned for that what Singing in the Rain. By the way, Singing in the Rain, all-time best movie musical, starring Debbie Reynolds. I'm who was singing mother. in the rain. In the alien, I made the case that Ripley singing "You Are My Lucky Star" in the final scene to calm herself yeah. as she attacked the xenomorph was kind of a meta reverence by Sigourney Weaver, who had auditioned for Princess Leia, lost the part to Carrie Fisher, but still had respect for these women, blazing a trail for her to be able to be cast in the best sci-fi series of all time. Okay. Because we have to acknowledge that it would be crazy for Waylon Dutani long-haul truckers in the year 2122 to still know a movie musical from the 1950s. Now, mm. this shot is definitely an homage to yeah, the. That do sound like a bit of a stretch, like, like. But 64 musical film, it. The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And I feel like we're going to get references to a lot of different movie musicals in this film. Now, according to an IndieWire article, much of this sequel is reportedly taking place. Lol, you gotta watch this next. Unless you've seen it already. Alright, hold on. Well, there's no word yet when Gleason will be playing the other part of the speech will be said in Arkham Asylum. The sequel is estimated to cost approximately 200 million? How does shit set in a building and it's two million, 200 million? It's within Arkham Asylum. It's gonna be- Nah, it does seem like, you know, they, they have like crazy fucking scenes where they're outside and shit like that. Pretty confined movie, though apparently the budget is somewhere between 150- I just said that, listen, you, you yeah. 
I'm the one that got taught to me. In place within Arkham Asylum. It's gonna be a pretty confined movie, don't though apparently the budget is somewhere between 150 and 200 million dollars. We see you. some shots of Harley Quinn on the outside Crazy walking up these same steps that Arthur would walk up every day before he ended up getting Sub frustrated. So maybe we're gonna replay the events of the first film and see that she has had her eye on him since before he was infamous. Then we get this beautiful musical shot that looks like it's from the 2002 movie Chicago, where a spotlight is on. Oh my god, she purposely went crazy to get in there to talk to him. She's still a nurse. Mm. She's still a nurse, but she was in love with him ever since she saw him. She went, she pretended she crazy or some shit like that and ended up in there. Mm. Maybe she was a nurse that probably cared for him once when he got when he had, did he get shot? No, on the subway. Um, when are you doing shadow? No, he did the shooting on the subway. Dying out here. I don't know. I feel like I feel like he's probably it was probably something like they he saw her in the hospital. Or she saw her in the hospital. Him in the hospital. Or maybe he's just seen Maybe she just seen him on the news because that nigga really shot somebody in the head and that shit probably got her wet. Murray, while he's in his Joker makeup and right on the piano, pling, high notes, an additional light flickers on to Arthur's front side, lighting up his microphone. Back in Arkham while watching a movie, Harley leans over to Arthur and whispers, let's get out of here. And I imagine it's kind of like the scene in Shawshank Redemption and they're just watching some classic movie for like recreation time. Could be like any musical, right? Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger classic, maybe something Cole Porter. Then Arthur and Harley meet each other on a stage with multicolored windows in the building flats behind them and then a massive Don't moon. Don't I look at this 43 seconds video. We later see this set at a minute 41 seconds and it's the top of the Hotel Arkham where there is vacancy, which I think is just a fun reflection on how Arkham Asylum always just has open cell blocks. It's really just a revolving door facility for Gotham's rogues gallery. And right on the part of the song where it goes, what the world needs now, we cut on the same dance move to them now just waltzing. In the what in the fuck are we watching? It's it's too mature for you. Just come back when there's more like colorful cartoons on the screen. It's too, this is adult stuff, man street so they will get out of prison and we will see how as we continue through this trailer arthur runs down mm. the same street that we saw him running down in the 2019 film he's chased by two members of the joker gang the further one back almost looks exactly like he did when he was in his red that's suit. why i was confused when i first seen the trailer i was like wait what the hell is going on but the first runner gets hit by a police car and you have to wonder is he really running from anyone or is he really just running from projections of himself then we see this talk show set that looks like murray franklin's set but the lights now reveal joker and harley which might be within arthur's fantasy or who knows maybe in this world they really did just take over the studio we see harley painting the harlequin yeah this whole movie is gonna be just one big mind fuck bro lines down her eyebrows and her cheeks and it kind of feels like the unhinged moment when arthur in the 2019 film painted his face and then just like pulled his cheeks up into a smile and i think it's interesting that this trailer ends with this amazing shot of arthur forcing his face into a smile drawn by harley quinn there's some just incredible symbolism in this this video is sponsored by blue chew look what you do in your bedroom <laughs> is your business but if your business blue chew blue chew arises Blue Chew, Mike, no waiting in thank you for the recent skeptical Blue Chew. Club. The actual where Arthur and Harley look safety information and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our channel. Then there's a jazzy nightclub where Arthur and Harley look like, you know, they could be in something that of Spider-Man 3, but this could <laughs> be the actual stand-up club that Arthur would perform Give me some at. shade. Of Arthur laughing as he's dragged down the Give me the some hall. shade. And then Harley Quinn in her final form outfit, this red blazer with makeup Harley Quinn diamonds on oh, either side of her shit. eyes. She walks up the steps of the courthouse and check out these signs in the crowd. Free Joker, Arthur Fleck killed something something, Gotham forever Joker, then like like a Christian cross, a sign that says resist, and then a Grim Reaper sickle. And then we see Steve Coogan playing some kind of reporter asking, tell us what changed Arthur? Which kind of feels like mm -hmm. uh, maybe a Melvin Belli reporter, like in Zodiac, when he's mm -hmm. like trying to psychoanalyze the Zodiac. Chills well with another fuck, get this up! My boy. Down the courthouse steps I appreciate it. Look at this. Arthur's iconic dance. Bop! They killed that shit, bro. Hack over a TV broadcast. Arthur I really wonder how Lady Gaga got going doing this. Yo, thank you so Arthur's much for five. Get there, bro. For real, for real. Film, but the notice this newspaper free on all charges. Oh my God! So presumably Arthur will convince the judge or the. What? We just saw this nigga blow this uh, the, the the nigga's head off. Look at the new Godzilla figurine they just announced. Wait. What? How the fuck did this nigga get free? <gasps> oh my god, I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. 
Retail price has yet to be announced. $30. <laughs> like $40. <laughs> right? Need it. I 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 need it. Yo, keep me in the loop of this, please, bro. Uh, Did you get the cup for the movie? Wait, what cup? jury that he killed murray on live tv by the way out of self-defense or that maybe there was some other hell no nah. even if you plead insanity it's like my nigga what you blew that nigga's brain out bruh problem with the case but he was on tv we all saw it happen is he gonna argue that this was some kind of like mass delusion it was ai maybe because he was like all masked up he could say it wasn't him it was somebody else that wasn't me. I don't know, bro. This shit is crazy. How the hell you get away with this? Gots to see. And that it's gonna work? Maybe arguing that everyone in Gotham is so crazy that they view a plain in sight murder as possibly justified? Also, I love this detail. On the right in this crowd, it looks like there's a guy dressed up as Prince, which is perfect because of course, Prince recorded music for the 1989 Tim Burton Batman film. And that was- What the fuck? Was part of the big reason it was such a huge hit during the summer of Batmania. And then this shot where Arthur is cuffed in the back seat of this truck as he's brought into what seems like his trial. The trial there is yeah. a Joker mask guy behind him banging on the back window, and that kind of looks like one of the masks from the opening heist sequence in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. That's the one who goes, Where did you learn how to count? Then we see another stage set with a curvy white path leading to a wedding chapel. We see bridesmaids like the singers of Little Shop of Horrors. Ring bearer, though, on the right is Gary, Arthur's fellow co worker whom he killed Randall and oh! movie. And poor Gary. Nice. He was so traumatized. Two shots of Yo, Arthur and external, Harley thank you. And then Arthur for the someone with a stool in a nightclub. Notice how he never lets go of the microphone. So I wonder if that microphone is kind of like the way he gets in and out of the fantasy. And if he lets go of the microphone, the fantasy drops. Then we see rioters and looters throwing a trash bin through the window of a TV repair shop where Arthur is on the screens. Harley and Arthur run hand in hand away from a fire that I assume they started in this place. Then this explosion rocks a press conference. And you know, a lot of these reporters would not have made it. There's like TV news cameras. What the hell happened here? Gotham is going to be set ablaze. I'm really worried. Har TV news cameras. What the hell happened here? Gotham is going to be set. Ace in the hole. She is arching that shit. What is this place? A blaze. I'm really worried. Harley points a gun at Joker while he's on stage, and I assume this is like part of their. Act. Uh, is there? Is this person dead behind her? Act. But notice this shot at 1:51. Harley smears blood on her lips, and this is a courtroom, folks. You can see lawyers and their paperwork <gasps> on the desk. This might be during Arthur's <gasps> trial. I really. Big. So is just Telda Scrolls online. The cinematics are awesome. Oh my god! I think that of all the movie oh, musicals that this movie might uh. be based on, they're going to be pulling from the 2002 film Chicago, based on the original Bob Fosse musical back from the 70s. This is one of the all-time best movie musicals. It might be like the last time a movie musical has won Best Picture, and deservedly so. It's an important film that everyone should see. That takes a character who clearly shot someone in cold blood and murder, but was able to just corrupt the justice system enough to get off it basically is able to transpose a trial in a courtroom into like a three ring circus a vaudevillian variety show as this musical satirizes corruption within the justice system and the way the media converges with it i really what? think this movie is kind of like a perfect way to do that now that you know we are seeing trials of people who claim they could kill someone in the middle of fifth avenue and get away with it but i love how this trailer ends with harley me too the lips me too the smiley face that lines up with arthur's cheek and walk what was that other musical called Gotta watch that. Gotta watch that. Let me put it in my thing. Yo, Kiera. Kiera, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Kiera. Shout out. Kiera. Kiera. I still gotta watch Super 8. I don't even know why I have that in my notes. I don't know if y'all told me or what. Chicago. Hamilton. Like, get the fuck out of here. Chicago. Let me just type in, like, musical movie. Bro, did y'all see, was it Detroit? Got a, like a Hollywood sign or something? What the fuck were they cooking? <laughs> what the fuck were they cooking? I know, I still gotta watch Let It Shine. Let It Shine. Joaquin leans back and forces the smile that fits perfectly into it. I have to wonder how many times did they have to do this take to get it to line up perfectly? It's Joaquin Phoenix, probably like two. 
like this. Like Arthur is bending himself to fit into Harley's image of happiness rather than the other way around. Just think about how complex it would be to line this up perfectly. One actor drawing just a smiley face freehand on a pane and another one just knowing where the camera is lined up and the focal range and then just nailing it just with a facial expression alone. Like that's how precise Joaquin Phoenix is when it comes to control of his own face. So Actually, good. in order to pull off the shot, I bet what they did is they put a monitor within Joaquin I was about to say, there's gotta be a monitor for him to look at so that he could see where it lines up yo this oh my god like this this shot deserves this little segment here like all the glaze Phoenix's eye line behind Lady Gaga showing the exact camera position so that wherever Lady Gaga drew the smile he could just lean back into it and kind of keep his eyes focused where it should be and see where he was but that's still really really hard to do and just putting this shot in the trailer shows off the kind of technical precision that Todd Phillips and his cinematographer Lauren Cher are going for in this movie these guys are not f***ing around and it's interesting because other than Joker these guys are not really known for <laughs> you guys you glazing a little bit too much, man. Calm, calm your ass down, man. Damn. It was a fire ass up, but relax, bruh. Breathe. They made a diss track on the Detroit sign. Holy shit. <laughs> Shows off the kind of technical. It's like he's going faster and faster. No. Precision that Todd Phillips and his cinematographer Lauren Cher are going for in this movie. These guys are not f***ing around. And it's interesting because other than Joker, these guys are not really known for prestige cinema, but they are really upping their game here. Mm. And yes, the framing of the shot does remind me of Robert Pattinson's Batman interrogating the Riddler in the 2022 Batman film. You know the scene from the infamous new rock star's thumbnail. Does he know? <laughs> for this movie, I feel like our thumbnail is going to be like, is she real? James Gunn, who is now overseeing oh God, all the DC it. movies, confirmed that while some upcoming DC films will have Elseworlds branding Joker 2 will not be part of that Elseworlds branding and should really be seen as a completely standard. Yeah, don't fuck now, it up bro. reporting from Variety that we may see 15 songs on the track list and that 15 15 is not bad chat and that's not saying that they're all like musicals that's like that's just music like you know it's probably just like music in in certain scenes and shit like that, bro. Yo, gifted sag. Thank you for the resubscription. I appreciate you. Insiders described it as like a jukebox musical and that there was going to be 15 reinterpretations of very well-known songs. And one of them is said to be That's Entertainment from the 1953 musical The Bandwagon that was famously associated with Judy Garland. So obviously this is kind of a love story between Joker and Harley Quinn as they kind of la la land their way into la la land. But I want to know from you, are we going to see young Bruce Wayne part of this story? Is he coming back? Comment down below with your reactions to this trailer. Are you excited for this film? Yes. I love movie musicals, even if they're jukebox ones. Let's not forget that what made the release of The Dark Knight such a huge weekend for all of movies everywhere was that the other movie in the movie theaters was Mamma Mia. That was the original Barbenheimer, folks. Comment down below with your thoughts and follow new rock stars on all social media. Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia. Rockstars, the break room. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't, hold on. I feel like Nobody was really talking about like Mamma Mia the way that they were talking about Barbie though. At least I didn't see it online. When Joker was coming out, bro, it was just straight Joker. Like every it was just straight Joker. Everybody was talking about Joker, bro. Like it was just only Joker. La La Land. But I want to know from you, are we going to see young Bruce Wayne part of this story? Is he coming back? Comment down below with your reactions to this trailer. Are you excited for this film? I am. I love movie musicals, even if they're jukebox ones. Let's not forget that what made the release of The Dark Knight such a huge weekend for all of movies everywhere was that the other movie in the movie theaters was Mamma Mia. That was the original. Oh, we talking about Dark Knight? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Every every niggas was just talking niggas was talking about the dark bro it's just batman 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 i didn't even know this was a thing bro i didn't even know this was a thing Arbenheimer, folks comment down below with your thoughts and follow new rock stars on all social platforms subscribe to new rock stars the break room and the deep dive follow me at ea Voss. thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye w video man you always smash it you always smash it man